Hey y'all, in this video we're going to get into one of the new features that's available in the new Vectric version 10.5. Now I'm using Aspire, however everything I'm going to show you is available in Cut2D, VCarve, in all versions, Desktop and Pro, and Aspire. But before we can do that, we need to install version 10.5. Now I've loaded up the old version of Aspire here. I'm using 10.022. And as some of you are aware, over here in blue it says version 10.503 is available. Upgrades, whether it be from 10.5 or 9.5 to 10 or 9.5 to 10.5 are not updates to the version you're using. They are upgrades. They are complete separate installs. So, using this link right here is not the way to go about it. So, I'm going to go ahead and just close Aspire version 10. And as you can see, I have already installed version 10.5. And the way to do that is to go to your V and Company account. And I'll put a link to the V and Company login page down in the description of this video. Log in to your V and Company account, sign in, and right down here it says, Download your software. You go to that link and it shows you the software you have available and any additional clip art that's available to you. Now, you may see a long list down here. When you install the new version, by clicking this link right here, it will install that long list of clip art as well. Follow the prompts, get your software installed and updated, and go from there. But the main point to take away from this is don't use the link up here in the Vectric software. Go to your V and Company account and download through that link there. Now let's get into one of the new features and that is creating template files. And this is something I've been waiting for for a while. If we look over here, right after we open the software, we have a new choice up here. We can create a new file, we can open an existing file, or we can open a file from a template. Well, before we can use this, we need to create a template. And template files are different from standard existing files in that they can be made for materials that you use commonly or designs that you use commonly that just may require a few simple changes like names or dates. So, to create a template, you'll create a new file. And, for instance, the most popular sign size I make is 14 by about 10 and a half or 10 and 3 quarters. Now I can standardize that to 14 by 10 and 3 quarters and save a template. So, what I'm going to do is do my job setup here, and it's a single sided job. The width of my material in X will be 16. That will give me an inch over here for mounting and an inch over here for mounting. The height of my material is 11 and a quarter, and the thickness of my material is 3 quarters of an inch. This is the standard height in Y and thickness of a select pine 
piece of material from my local home improvement store, be it the blue one or the orange one. So I have my width and X of 16 inches, my height and Y of 11 and a quarter inches, and my nominal thickness of 3 quarters of an inch. I'm working in inches, of course. I'm setting my Z0 to the material surface, my XY datum for layout purposes is in the center. I'm not going to be doing any 3D modeling, so standard resolution is just fine. And I'll click OK. So I have my material set up. Now I need to create a vector that is 14 by 10 and 3 quarters out here to use as my profile toolpath. So I'll come over here under Create Vectors to draw a rectangle. I'll set my anchor point of that rectangle to the center. I want square corners. And I want my vector to be 14 inches wide in X. And I'll change that to 10 and 3 quarter inches high in Y. I'll click Create. Close that, and now I can make first template file. To do that, I'll come up here to File, Save as Template. I'll click on that, and I have created a folder specifically for my template file. And if we look down here, we see that there is a new file type. Instead of a standard Aspire CRV 3D file, this is CRV T 3D. It's an Aspire template file. Now, if I come over here to the drop down menu and I look, I can also save this as a VCarve template file, meaning it could be opened in VCarve Desktop or VCarve Pro of the same family, 10.503 or newer, but anything in the template that is Aspire only will be stripped out of that template before it's saved. So any 3D modeling will be stripped out before that template is saved. So I'm going to go ahead and call this my 14 by 10.75 sign blank. And I'll save that template. Now I can close that file. I don't need to save any more changes. I have saved that template. Now I can come up here whenever I need to use that template to create a sign. I can click on New File from Template, navigate to the proper folder. There is my 14 by 10 and 3 quarter inch sign blank. I can open it. It will go straight to Job Setup so I can confirm everything is correct. Click OK, and I'm ready to go. I can bring in my text, I can bring in any artwork that I'm going to put in my design. This has got my material template set up just fine for this particular sign. And I can use it over and over again. If I come over here, put in some text, and I say, Close, and I'll align that to the center of my material. Close. Now, if I want to save this file, I'll come up here to File, and I'll click Save As, and it will save as a CRV 3D file. It will not overwrite that template. It will save as a new file, leaving that template available 
for me to create more signs. So I can save this. Then I can close it, come back and open up my sign blank again, and create as many signs as I like. That template will not be changed. If I need to change this template or use this as the basis for a new template, I would come up to Job Setup, enter any new information over here, click OK, then come up, Save as Template, then I can either give it a new name or I can click on this name and save it again to overwrite this template file. So I'll click on Save. It'll tell me it already exists. Do I want to replace it? I can click Yes. And now that template has been updated with any changes that I have made to it. And you can create as many templates as you'd like. If you use varying thicknesses of materials, you can create one for a half inch of the same size. Create a new template. If I want to leave my job set up alone, but change this rectangle to ten and a half inches tall, apply, close. Now I can save that template and I'll take this name, but I'll change to 14 by 10 and a half sign blank, save, and now in that folder I have two copies, as well as the mark sign that I made just a minute ago. So that's one way of using this, these template files, is to create templates for materials that you use often. You can add vectors or leave them blank as you wish. Now, another way of using it is to create signs or create patterns to include toolpaths where you have certain aspects of the sign that you need to change on occasion. For instance, let's take a, another example here and we'll draw some more text and we'll put Happy Birthday Mark and we'll close that. We'll align it to the center. And I'll go ahead and resize that down to where it fits within my vector. And that's fine. Now I can come up here and save this as a template. And now I have this sign saved. I can come back to it, change the name, and drive on. If I look down here in my folder, there is my template file right here. But let's say, for example, I want to go ahead and calculate tool paths. I can do that. I can go over here, and with my vectors selected, I'll go ahead and do a V carve tool path. I'll use a start depth of zero. We'll go with a flat depth of 0.1. This is going to be too small for any kind of an end mill that I have right now. So I won't use a clearance tool. And we'll just call that V carve one. And I'll change the tool path color so you can see it. 
and we'll preview. And then I'll come back over, close. I'll select this vector. My cut depth. I like to cut through the material by five thousandths of an inch. So up here I'll type Z plus point zero zero five. Then tap the equals button and it gives me my cut depth. I'm going to use the quarter inch end mill. That's fine. Uh, machine to the outside. Do a separate last pass with an allowance of point zero one. I will add tabs to the tool path. I want them to be 3D tabs with half inch long, one quarter inch tall. I'll edit those tabs. Uh, let's see. I will choose a constant number. I want four tabs. And one of the new options you have is your tab placement. Avoid corners and curved regions. That gives you less to clean up. So we'll go ahead and we'll click Add Tabs, and it's placed four tabs out here. Now, it's been my experience that with a quarter inch end mill, cutting this close to the edge of the material, these tabs don't do a lot out here. So I'll put my cursor over that, and you'll see right underneath that tab, there's an X. I just click on that and it deletes that tab. I'll delete this one as well. And I'll put one here. Then I'll move this one, just drag it down to about here. Put this one here and drag this one up to about there. So I've got four tabs holding this sign in place. Close that. And I'll go ahead and calculate that tool path. I get the warning that it's going to cut through the material. And we'll preview that tool path. And there is a very oversimplistic sign. Now I can close that. Come back over here. Save as template, and I'm going to overwrite this happy birthday template to include these toolpaths. So I'll click on that, save. Do I want to replace it? Yes. Then I can go ahead and reset my preview, close it, go back over to my 2D view. And I'm finished with this particular sign, this particular template. No, I don't want to save any other changes. I've already saved the template file. Now, the next time I need to do a happy birthday sign, I can come over here, new file from template. I can click my happy birthday template, open it up. I'm going to go through the job setup and make sure everything is correct. Click OK. Now it's calculating the tool paths automatically. So I'm getting the warning that the tool will cut through the material. I'll click OK. And if we look over here, my tool paths are there. Well, now I don't want to make this sign for me, I want to make it for someone else. I purposely left this text as a text object. So all I have to do is select it, come back over here to text, open it up, and I can come down here and change the name. Close that. Go over to my Toolpaths tab. And right here, recalculate all toolpaths. It's giving me the warning that the tool will cut through the material. Click OK. All toolpaths successfully recalculated. Click OK. 
Now I can go into my preview, preview all toolpaths. And there's my new sign. I can then save a preview image of it to send to the customer. Close my preview to get out of that window. Come up here, File, Save As. Happy Birthday Frank will be the file name. Save it, and I'm finished with that particular sign. Now, if I need to, I can come in here, open up the template. It's still saved with my name in here because that's the template file I save. And then whenever I need to create a new sign, I can select the text, open it up, change the name, come over, recalculate the toolpath, preview, and go. This comes in very, very handy if you use the same material, you use the same design, or use the same setup. Quite often, where all you have to do is change certain aspects like names or dates. The key to this, however, is to leave this text as a text object to make it more easily editable. And that way you can come in here and again just click on text with it selected and your text is up here for you to edit. So template files are going to make the workflow much, much, much easier. I highly recommend creating a folder where you can store those template files for later use and organize them as you see fit. Maybe subfolders within these folders for one subfolder for MDF, another subfolder for plywood, just based on your workflow. And again, the file extension of the CRVT file for VCARV or CRVT 3D file for Aspire, that T indicates that it is a template file. So, I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, I do hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Later on today, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session where we can discuss anything I've presented in this video. That'll be today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel. And I'll put a link down in the description box of this video. Now, these live Q&A sessions are a lot of fun for me. And they're a good reason to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And when you do hit that red subscribe button down there, go ahead and click that little bell button. Then click it again and set that to all notifications. That way, you'll get a notification the next time I post a video and the next time I go live. So I hope to see you this afternoon for the live Q&A session. And, as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not. I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and y'all take care.